there are no other Everglades in the world. They are vast. They are a refuge for wildlife. They are a national treasure. The Everglades is not a swamp. It is a river of grass stretching more than 120 miles long and 50 miles wide. It is a wetland so vast it covers most of the southern Florida peninsula. And it is dying. The Florida Everglades is an American treasure and it is our challenge as Americans to preserve one of the world's most productive ecosystems for future generations. On July 1, 1999, the Clinton-Gore administration presented an $8 billion plan to Congress to fix our dying Everglades. Sierra Club believes the plan has much merit, but still has key flaws. In the next few minutes, you'll learn why the Everglades is so important, what led to its decline, and what needs to be done to fix it. First, some geography. The Everglades is located in the southern third of the Florida Peninsula. This giant watershed is the only subtropical preserve on the North American continent. And it is the largest designated wilderness area in the southeastern U.S. The Everglades is a fragile world of water and of balance. Noted conservationist Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, who died in 1998 at the age of 108, wrote of the Everglades, Nothing anywhere else is like them. Their vast glittering openness, wider than the enormous visible round of the horizon. She explained that the Everglades was not stagnant, but a wide, slow-moving river. Historically, its waters flowed from Lake Kissimmee and meandered down the Kissimmee River into Lake Okeechobee, the country's second largest lake. Water would then spill over the southern bank of the lake and flow in wide sheets across the peninsula until it discharged into the Gulf of Mexico and Florida Bay at the bottom of the state. Humans have torn the Great River of Grass apart. At the turn of the century, the Everglades was more than seven million acres. Now, half of that has been drained for cities and farms, but much can be restored. It is a delicate ballet between the blazing Florida sun and the slow-moving water that creates this amazing subtropical web of life. As the water drifts southward, usually at a depth of only six inches, it sets into motion one of the world's most diverse food chains. A river of life that gives rise to tree islands with densely packed habitats of fern and pine. And hundred-year-old cypress trees that spring out of the river like magic. For those unaccustomed to South Florida, there are neither snowstorms nor icy winds. There are simply two seasons, the wet season and the dry season. It is the delicate balance of these two that provides habitat for one of America's rarest birds, the snail kite. and the nearly extinct Cape Sable Seaside Sparrow. This sparrow, found only in the Everglades, has the most restricted range of any North American bird. Its population has dropped by 60% since 1981. Even deer find sound footing in this giant wetland. And of course, there are the alligators, the Everglades' most famous residents but even the gators aren't doing very well. 
Today's freshwater gators are smaller than they were five years ago because food is harder to find. And they're also having reproductive problems. Meanwhile, their coastal cousins, the crocodiles, are bordering on extinction. Today, 14 federally endangered animal species are barely surviving in the Everglades. The most recognized, the Florida panther, has fallen from several hundred to only 30. Humans have disrupted breeding patterns and poisoned this once prosperous animal. A panther recently found dead in Everglades National Park contained enough mercury to easily kill a human. The Florida black bear lives in an area of the Everglades called the Big Cypress National Preserve. Much of its habitat originally extending from northern Florida through the Florida Keys has been lost due to human development. Another endangered mammal, the West Indian manatee, roams the coastal waters of the Everglades. Collisions with careless boaters and a dwindling food supply caused by pollution have left about 2,000 remaining. There was a time, not long ago, when the Everglades waters arrived clean and on a natural schedule providing enough food for every living being. At the turn of the century, hundreds of thousands of wading birds stalked the marshes and darkened the skies in flight. But in just one century, nine out of every ten wading birds have vanished. Despite the drastic decline, the Everglades still remains the most significant habitat for wading birds in North America. It is home to the roseate spoonbill, the great blue heron, the snowy egret, and the anhinga. Many of these birds are protected within Everglades National Park Established in 1947, it is the largest wilderness area east of the Rockies. Even so, the park is only one-fifth of the entire natural Everglades. You can see it outlined here at the bottom of the peninsula. Other parts of the Everglades are owned by state and federal governments, but have fewer protections. The park is visited by more than one million tourists each year. It is the only place with three international designations, a United Nations World Heritage Site, an International Biosphere Reserve, and a wetland of international significance. Sierra Club, the country's oldest grassroots environmental organization, and concerned citizens are now working to undo a hundred years of human damage. Since 1900, South Florida politicians and land speculators sought to drain the Everglades. They made modest inroads, but never seemed to have quite enough money or equipment to roll back the mighty wetland. All that changed in 1947, when back-to-back -back hurricanes hit South Florida. Local politicians told the United States Congress that the Everglades was responsible for the heavy flooding and loss of life caused by the storm. But local politicians and land speculators had another motive. Miles and miles of new suburbs and farms. The draining of the Everglades meant progress. <laughs> 